everyone, to the Banco Turco here, and welcome back to the Stories of Soto Reactions. Today we're going to be re reacting to Experiment. Now, before we begin, I'd like to apologize that at what point in the last reaction, my camera had a bit of a problem. I think you guys spotted that. Uh, that's because my camera, my, the, my Okay, not really my camera, but my tablet's camera has a problem, has a problem, and it's probably going to be fixed when I come back home from my vacation, from my small vacation here in the mountains. It's probably going to be fixed, I hope. But, uh, yeah, I'd like to apologize for that, but until then, let's get on to the reaction. I'll put it at full, vo at full volume, and let's get started in 3, 2, 1, go! Oh, sorry about that. Dun! The, the train, train for its type, type is, is the most, most powerful vehicle on land. land. And the, the engines, engines of Sodor are, are the power behind, behind the docks, docks, industries, and branch lines that make up the world-renowned Northwestern Railway. Railway. Also, I'd like to say that this episode experiment is probably going to be extremely interesting because... When I watched Rescue for the first time, and I think you guys saw my reaction, I was very confused on what the Barry experiment is. So maybe this episode will explain what the Barry experiment uh, was. Because um, I was very confused, and it's probably going to solve everything. This episode is probably going to solve everything. <laughs> These are the stories of Sodor. When the mine at Marston Heights closed down, we had to start importing coal from the mainland. The engine that most often handled these jobs was Francis. The Class 46 would deliver trains up and down the line, dropping off trucks along the way. While he carried out this assignment well, I'd be lying if I said he did so without a fuss. I know. Also, from what I remember in the episode Dieselization, it said that... He had an awful personality and hated pulling goods, and this is goods. So, yeah. I assume that he's pretty pissed at doing this job. Whew, how humiliating. Shunting dirty trucks filled with dirty coal into dirty sidings. What yeah. a waste of... I, I made the yeah because that honestly reminded me of uh, Dirty Objects. Been on the episode Dirty Objects where James crashed into some tar wagons. Dirty trucks from dirty sidings. Yeah. I just quoted the episode. But, uh, yeah. Dirty trucks in dirty sidings. Yeah. Of my talents. Same bollocks, different day. I wouldn't expect a lowlife like you to understand, James, but engines such as I are above certain jobs. I swear, if I ever meet the tosspot who designed you, I'm gonna kill him, if you say so. <laughs> What James said was pretty funny. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll be on my way. Actually, Francis, there's been a change in the schedule. James will take your train the rest of the way. I need you to cover for me. And why is that? Has your reversing gear jammed again? Wait, reversing gear? Oh, dear. I really pity you, Steamies. There is so much that can go wrong with you. I assume your next train is trucks? Specifically, those ones. The Flying Kipper! Surely you jest! And I'm guessing that the engine who will be pulling the Flying Kipper is probably going to have an accident. You know, because Jeffrey pulled the Flying Kipper in the first episode, and he died. Then Henry pulled the Flying Kipper in Rescued, and he ended up having a horrible crash. And uh, now I'm assuming that the engine that will be pulling the Flying Kipper uh, will have an accident too. Surely you go! Oh, fine. Whew, fish. 
I can smell it from here. How does it compare with ditch water? Very droll, James. <laughs> Whoa. What happened? His cooling system failed. He claims it was caused by handling too many goods trains. <laughs> <laughs> Same old Francis. Yep. Do you know him? Yes, I helped design him. You've got to be kidding. What was that, James? Um, <laughs> nothing, sir. <laughs> so this is Barry? Yes, indeed. Barry, <laughs> allow me to introduce Gordon, James, and Reginald. I believe you've already Wait, met Barry. Donald. Yes, sir. Nice to meet all of you and to see you again, Donald. Likewise, yep. bust my buffers. You look a hell of a lot better than the last time I saw you. I feel... Indeed it does. He looks a lot better. Though in terms of model, I think I much prefer his old one, though. I'm... I, I much prefer the old one than this new one. It's mainly down to the face. I don't know, I just much prefer him having Colin's face than this, uh, face. I much prefer his, uh, older face, you know, him having Colin's face. I can see why this was done, because, uh, uh, fans would probably be wondering why does he have Colin's face. But if you really think about it, Arthur, Adam, William, and Reginald have the exact same angry face. Okay, Arthur has a different variation, but, uh, yeah. It still sort of counts as an angry face, but, uh, yeah. Let's continue on with the episode. Feel better, too. And it's yep. all because of this genius. Thank you, Rob. Looks like the yep. experiment is a success. What experiment? Well, for the past few years, I've been working on a procedure to improve the performance of non-faceless steamies while simultaneously Ooh. reducing the running costs required to maintain them. Is this your special project, Rob? What? It is. I call it Steam Diesel Conversion, Ooh. or SDC, which means what? That despite appearances, I'm actually a diesel. Wait. Oh, so does this mean that he's actually running on oil, but he's a steamy? Interesting, very interesting. You're going to have to explain that. Certainly. Basically, Barry has a diesel electric motor installed in his boiler that powers oh. all of his gears. And instead of coal and water, he runs on oil stored in his tender. And it works? If today was any indication, yes. I had such an easy time of it dragging Francis and his train to Crovin's gate, and I barely used any fuel. I think we could pop... To be honest, this kind of reminds me of Tobias and the Half Pariah, if you get what I mean. You know how uh, Toby and Montague, and Montague was once a diesel engine and not a steam engine, and uh, the Montague as a diesel... Um, with Toby, who used to be a, a normal tram engine, had an accident and they were severely damaged. And they performed an experiment on Toby by uh, implanting Montague's diesel engine into Toby's steam tram engine. And uh, Montague was turned into a tank engine. So yeah, this kind of reminded me of Tobias and the Half Pariah, if you get what I mean. Up the champagne early, Rob. Settle <laughs> down, Barry. I agree the initial results are promising, but we need to conduct a lot more tests before we can celebrate. And so the experiment began. All over the island, Barry carried out a variety of tasks aimed at testing the effect. Wait, I, I, I think I saw this scene in uh, the season 5 preview. Yes, I did. 
effectiveness of steam diesel conversion, and by all indications, it was very effective. He was faster, stronger, and more fuel efficient than he ever was as a steamy. In fact, he was faster, stronger, and more fuel efficient than many of us. This caused some concern he would let this superiority go to his radiator, but I'm pleased to say it didn't. Barry was a remarkably... Oh, so, uh... And, uh, so, I don't know if we should call him a steam engine, because he's sort of a steam-diesel hybrid, and, uh, yeah? Sure. So, should we call him a steamy or a diesel? Maybe a steam-diesel? I don't know. Also, I, I, I sort of see Edward and Barry next to each other, and they're sort of smiling it at each other in a certain way that sort of reminds me of that Sodor answers can vehicles run for positions of power where it showed Edward next to Barry when it talked about uh, marriage between non-faceless vehicles which implied Edward was gay what I guess you could explain why in return Edward said that uh, Daisy is in his type to be honest I kind of thought that he wanted a girlfriend that was a steam engine to be honest but uh yeah after seeing that sort of answer the video i don't know how should i how i should make a conclusion because i don't know if soda answers is canon to stories of soda but we'll see let's see how this episode goes a humble and helpful chap in between tests he would take extra trains for us indeed he was very eager to work perhaps a little too eager <laughs> Come on, Rob, this train's due to leave in five minutes. Take it easy, Barry. We're still performing the final checks. Why do we have to do this every time? Because collecting data is the second most important part of an experiment. And what's the first? Yep. Ensuring the test subject is safe. We'll be done soon. Don't worry. Now that's a man who cares. I yep. know. I just wish I could take a train without being fussed over. I know the feeling. During my trance back on the Northeastern Railway, I was so eager to show off what I could do. It landed me in hot water many times. And a rubbish tip once. A rubbish tip? Yep, I was speeding along and came off the track. I rolled down a hill and landed in a pile of garbage. After that, everyone used to say they could tell I was coming because of the whiff. They started calling me that so often they probably forgot my real name. Which is what? Ignatius? Wait, what? Wait, what? Ig... Ig... I don't even know how to pronounce that name. Ig... Ig... Ignatius? Ig... What kind of a name is that? Is that like some Yiddish, Danish name? Like what? Yeah, however the hell you say that name. Like the what kind of a name is that? I don't. I. I. Someone better tell me. Um. I seriously don't know. Can I keep calling you with? Of course. All right, Barry. Everything checks out. We're good to go. And off he goes. How come you stopped? According to Rob, my engine was running hot. I told him bollocks. That was nothing compared to the heat my fire used to make. He said that might be the problem. What's hot for a diesel may be mild for a steamy. I think he's being overly cautious. I don't. It takes very little for a motor to overheat. If that happens, the results can be disastrous. Take my advice, Barry. Pace yourself and only handle the jobs you've been assigned, not the work of those less capable. What's that supposed to mean? It means you should stop bobbing your work off onto Barry. They're not bobbing off anything, Francis. I want to work. Now that is the sign of a really useful engine. I know. You should follow his example, Francis. You can start by taking the goods train you've been assigned to handle. Oh, fine. I don't agree with how Frank said it, but he has a point. You should slow down a wee bit. Learn to rest once in a while. I've rested yeah. enough, Donald. I need to work. If you say so, laddie. Right then, radiators. You look terrible. 
Oh, I feel terrible. Oh, I think it's the coal. Something's wait. off about it. You're in no condition wait, to work. Wait. I have to. I'm already late to pick up the kipper. Whoa, wait, wait, what is... Is Donald okay? Is Donald okay? I, I hope he's okay. Don't worry. I'll take it instead. Are you sure? Shall we ask Rob about it? He won't be here for another 20 minutes. I'm sure he won't mind. This is an emergency after all. <sighs> all right. But remember, I know, I know. Take it easy. I'll be fine. Okay. Are you all right, Barry? I've been better, so that's what a hot motor feels like. I'll remember that. I'm sorry, Rob. Don't be. I'm the one who's sorry. Why? When I arrived at Napford, I spoke to Donald. He told me about some of the things you said, and I'm kicking myself for not conducting a psychological examination on you before starting the experiment. Oh. You think I need one? Let's find out. You told Donald you need to work. Why? Because I've been in a coma for the past seven years? Yes, I think... I I, uh, I agree with why Barry wants to work. Like, if I did, like, if I stopped doing something for seven bloody years and then started doing it again, I would want to do as much of it as possible. So, uh, yeah. Yes, does that make you angry? Of course it does. A couple of pillocks cocked up my paperwork and poof, my life is gone. And overworking yourself will change that? No, but at least when I'm busy, I don't have to think about what happened to me. I see. What does that mean? That we have a lot of work to do. He was right about that. The experiment was put on hold while Barry underwent treatment. It took some time, but he was able to work through most of his issues. When he returned to work, he was still helpful, but not compulsively so. He also completed the remaining tests without incident. BR was impressed by the results and adopted steam diesel conversion into its maintenance program. Over the following years, countless non-faceless steamies would have it done, myself included. Aside from improving performance and reducing running costs, SDC increased our longevity, just as Robert hoped. He was thrilled his project had been so successful and proud to learn that many referred to steam diesel conversion as the overhaul. All right, so that was another good episode. It's not like it like it's not one of my favorites of the season, but I still really really like it, especially the bit where uh Barry breaks down. That was suspenseful and uh, it it it, it gets you sort of worried, like, what's going to happen to Barry? Like, like what's happening? And, uh, yeah, that was a pretty good episode. Not much to talk about, but uh, I can't wait for the next episode, Revenge. And I can't wait for the next three episodes, which are going to be Revenge, Munitions, and Fallout. And Revenge and Munitions are probably going to be the one that I'm most the ones that I'm most excited about because they're probably going to be the most action-packed of the season. And it sort of gets me worried about who might uh, die next. and Because uh, there's probably going to be more deaths in the munitions disaster. Some say it's Mickey. Some say it's, uh, some say it's also going to be uh, Sheffield. And uh, others say that, I don't know, uh, maybe, maybe Benson. But uh, until then... We're going to have to wait and see. But thank you guys for watching and make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Bye.